In jazz, everybody, the beat's the thing, you know. Your voice. In 1948, a kid fresh out of the army made a record called Skylark and found the world at his feet. His voice was the most amazing voice. There was not another singer who sounded like him. There was a timbre in that voice. There was a knowledge in that voice. Back home again. A friend of mine said, you never heard of Jackie Paris? He said, no. He plays me this album, and I flipped out. He was the vocalist of choice for Charlie Parker, Lionel Hampton, Charles Mingus, and Thelonious Monk. Was a favorite of Ella Fitzgerald, Nat Cole, and Sarah Vaughan. If Frank Sinatra were choosing his favorite singers, he would have certainly chosen Jackie Paris. When it was hip to be hep, Jackie Paris was hep. This hip lingo was always the hippest. Jackie had the swinging group and the most knockout chicks you ever saw. Jackie's emergence was explosive. He was held over at the Onyx Club for an unheard of 26 weeks. Having an agreed, sold it out. As Jackie Paris stood on the brink of stardom, MGM canceled his contract. I got the word Jackie Paris was running an elevator. In the 1960s, the trail on Jackie Paris goes cold. Star performers have disappeared because they drank or smoked themselves silly or went girl happy. None of these show business bromides fitted Paris. So what happened? He doesn't come off well, you know what I mean? He was hard to get along with sometimes. I hate to say, but Jackie had a big ego, a very big ego. I remember the Mafia did want to handle him, and he said no, he would make it on his own, or he wouldn't make it at all. I learned he had died in the late 70s at the young age of 51. That, I thought, was the whole story. People like Jackie Paris. Where it all went, I don't know. Then one night, I was reading the club listings of the New Yorker magazine and saw a familiar name. Jackie Paris was alive. Tis all right. 